Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series, Introducing Neural Networks. So in this video then what we're going to do is we're not going to write any code yet in our app. I just want to do one more sort of explanation before we go back into the app and that's following on from the last video is just how we're going to leverage Python and NumPy particularly to make all the matrix calculations and things in our neural network. For ease of use for this video and explanation I'm going to use something called a Jupyter Notebook. You may come, have come across it. It's a web-based um, interface for typing and executing Python line by line and for examples like this I think it's a lot easier to show things rather than executing scripts in the console. If you want to follow along yourself you can go to jupyter.org forward slash try and then click on try classic notebook and it will open you a notebook that looks like this. If you're going to do that we basically write the Python you'll see line by line in cells here and then we execute those cells by doing run cells or shift and enter. I won't go through the various controls for it because you can find those out yourself and also all the code that we type now we you can type in a Python script and run in the console as normal anyway. You'll just see it's easier to explain things like this in this video. So we're not going to do any code that's going to go in the app here. I just want to explain how we're going to go about calculating our matrix. So as reference what we're going to do is we're going to go through this matrix here from start to finish. Now I don't want to flick backwards and forwards this all the time. I'm going to take an image of this and hopefully manage to put it somewhere in the video so that it doesn't distract or cover up the code but it's there as reference very small. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to start with the 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. We've got our weights matrix matrices here and we'll calculate everything through to the end using NumPy. What we'll then do at the end of the video is show you how we're going to generate these weights matrices actually using random numbers from NumPy as well so that you get the idea of how that's done. And lastly I'll show you one more thing that we'll be using the code where we can randomly select different parts of an existing array. So the first thing we need to do in our code then is import NumPy. And normally NumPy is imported with the alias NP. The other thing we'll need is scipy.special for the activation function. Right, so once those are imported we can start walking through our network. So the first thing is we will get in our app a list of inputs and in our example uh, network we have three inputs. So let's make a list for our inputs. And now the thing about this list, we need to turn this list uh, into a matrix. Now you remember for NumPy the matrix is actually a list which contains other lists and each list inside the list is a row of the matrix. So what we need here is a two-dimensional array made from our inputs and we can do that with NumPy very easily. So let's make our matrix from this. I'll call it inputs uh, underscore m. And I can use the array function of NumPy And what I get out of this then, if I just have a quick look at this, is I get an array which is actually a matrix, but I've got a slight problem there. If you can see that I've got list inside a list, but I've actually got this one row with three columns. I want three rows with one column for our inputs. So what I have to do is I have to transpose this. NumPy has a functionality to do that because NumPy has everything. We'll do this step by step. I'll call this underscore t. I simply have to take my inputs underscore m and put a dot t on the end and then I get the transpose matrix where I now have my matrix here with my three rows and my one column in each row for my inputs. You can actually do all of that on one line. When I'm making the inputs underscore m here if I just put the dot t on the end and that's what we'll actually do in the app then I do the transposition automatically as well as you can see here. So that's the first thing you'll need to know is that we can create a NumPy matrix using ndmin equals 2. The dot t is a transposition and we can take a list in to be able to, to do that. The next thing is we have our matrix of our weights between the inputs and the hidden. And now what we want to do is we want to get the inputs into our hidden layer, which means multiplying the weights by our transposed inputs array here. So that's np dot dot. So is the multiplication and that gives us then our hidden input result which again is a list or is an array, is a matrix with two rows and one column. And now what I need to do is be able to apply the activation, the sigma, to these results here. And to do that this is why we've uh, imported the scipy.special because we're going to use uh, make an activation function and we're basically going to say here for any value we give into this activation function the xbit is the activation function in scipy.special, the sigma that we looked at. 
And this activation function will then apply this to any of the values that we supply. So what we can say then is that the hidden output is equal to our activation function and then our hidden inputs. And then you'll see in the result that we have the same form of matrix, but now we've applied the sigma, the activation function, to the hidden outputs. Now it weights from the hidden to the output, which are a slightly different form. Here we have another matrix here of three rows with two columns. And now we want to get the outputs. And to do that, we need to modify, uh, multiply, as I said in the previous video then, the weights by the hidden output. And that gives us output values. And of course, again, we need to apply the activation to those. So we apply those and we then get our final outputs from our matrix. So when we start writing the code, uh, probably next video, uh, in, when we start putting in a neural network, what you're going to see is that we're going to set up the neural network with a certain number of input nodes and output nodes and a hidden layer with a certain number of nodes. And then when we ask it for a result, we'll supply the neural network with an array just like this of inputs, except we'll have two inputs. And then we will go through this process. We will transpose the array, create a two-dimensional one, multiply it by the weights, send, send that output through the activation function, multiply that by the the other weights, send that through the activation function, and that will then be our final output. And when we've got our output, in our case, we'll only have one output. But if you've got more outputs, another handy function from NumPy, if you want just the max value from uh, an output, then you can just do numpy.max and that will give you the max value from any, any, I think any shape of array that you supply into numpy.max will give you the highest value that's inside there. And we'll use numpy.max simply to get the value out of our array. The only other thing that's missing from this, of course, is the weights themselves will actually be generated. We won't be hard coding the weights in like this. We're going to generate the weights randomly, which means we need to get from numpy an array of this particular shape that we need of random numbers. Now, the generation of weights is a huge topic in itself and can really affect how effective your neural network is. And in fact, when you're doing things like image recognition and things much more complicated than the Flappy Bird game, you'll find yourself running lots and lots of tests based on different ways of generating the starting weights. And you'll find that it really, really uh, can improve or really badly uh, affect um, your neural network depending on uh, how you generate the weights. One of the books that I read when starting to learn all this a while ago, which I want to plug now because I've also, in if you've read the book, you'll know I've used quite a bit of the, the methods in this series from this book. This It's very, very simple. Uh, Make Your Own Neural Network by uh, Tariq Rashid. And inside there, he goes into a little bit of detail about um, the maths behind neural networks, but also the how, how, how to generate the weights to make a good... A neural network and I, I can't recommend that book enough really it's really really good there are a couple of others as well another one I really really liked was this one a visual introduction for beginners it's slightly more complicated than the previous one it introduces bias nodes and things like that but again it's a really really good simple explanation and help me personally uh, understand things relatively well and they go into quite a bit of detail about how to generate the starting weights and just to show you how we'll be doing it inside the code, let's say I want a matrix with two rows and three columns. I can put this command into NumPy and say basically give me random values in a size of two rows by three columns back, so a matrix, and give me values between these bounds here uniformly. That's one way of doing it, and probably, I'm saying probably because I haven't decided yet, but probably the way we'll do it inside our code. Um, what the books say is actually it's better to do your weight generation based on a, a normal distribution. Um, we've got so few weights in our case, I'm not sure how important that is, but um, when you've got hundreds of hidden nodes, it, it'll be very, very important. And uh, another way of doing this would be to use the normal command on random from NumPy, which looks like this. And essentially that here says the mean, the standard deviation, and again, the size that you want. And again, in our case, uh, I'm not entirely sure how important that might or might not be. And again, we can test both variants or you can test both variants anyway. So what we'll be doing in our code, you'll see, is we'll generate our weights at the start of the program using probably a line that looks like this one in 81 here. So the last remaining thing will come a bit later on, not with the neural net, but when we start coming to mutate, and I'll do a video on how we're going to do the mutation, but some of it will in involve selecting weights from our existing weight matrices. So if I just generate a new array here called tester, and you can see that I've got a matrix essentially here of one row and 30 columns, but I've got 30 values inside here, which means if I take the first entry in this, I've got just a, a plain old array with 30 values. 
Let's imagine I want to select six random values from this. How would I do it? Well, I would like then a list maybe of six indexes from here. And to do that, I can use something which we'll be using later, which is why I'm showing it. It's using numpy.random. I can use something called dot choice. And here I can say how long or what the ranges I want to choose from. So in our case, that would be a range that is the length of our array, which is 30. I can say how many values I want to choose. So let's say I want to choose eight values. And I then set replace equals false, which tells it that I don't want any repeating values in the selection. So if I execute that, you can see I get a random selection, which will always be from zero to 30. So we'll also be using this later on inside our code as well to select random values from existing arrays. So you need to know that as well. Okay then, so that's it then for this video. You've seen all of the main code and stuff that we'll be using with NumPy. Now we can go back into the application and start coding the neural network into the, the game. So thanks very much for watching. Hope it's all clear and see you in the next one.